Hello everyone, uh, uh, how are you guys doing? Uh, greetings, this is, uh, today is March 4th, 2020. Uh, today is declared as the World Obesity Day. Uh, this is actually spearheaded by the World Obesity Federation in uh, collaboration with the World Health Organization. This is a, for the first time, a very important day that uh, World Obesity Day has been declared jointly by uh, a lot of federations all over the world um, a, with the help of World Health Organization. So why the World Obesity Day today and why is it important for you and me and all of us who are uh, seeking help? So as we speak today, um, as at about like let's say more than 30 percent of the population are overweight or obese all over the world. This is not just in the developed nations, this is happening even in the developing nations. Chronic metabolic disease, part of which is obesity, is actually the present day problem, not the communicable diseases that we used to think about. So, world health organization has declared this as a old uh, obesity day today primarily to actually promote awareness and uh, to help with uh, stopping uh, this uh, crisis that we are facing due to uh, the increasing obesity all over the world so uh, coming to some uh, details about what exactly is happening all over the world since this is the world obesity day not in uh, one single place where you and I live but it's a global perspective. Um, as we speak today about uh, more than 30% uh, of the population there is uh, obese and it's also that uh, there are about 30% more people who are obese and overweight as opposed to being underweight. So this is an interesting fact and as we see across the globe on the map you see more and more areas trending towards uh, obesity. So why is it important for you and me and how does it affect us? Uh, if you look at it, one of the main parameters uh, which we measure every day, the weight is just like anything else that we measure in the present day modern medicine like you measure your height, you measure your waist size, you measure blood pressure, you measure your glucose. So these are all measurables that we do on a routine basis in today's care and uh, uh, weight is one of the most important parameters. So there are a lot of implicit uh, assumptions and also explicit uh, uh, behaviors that we do out of these assumptions when it comes to weight. Uh, obesity and being overweight is actually a very complex uh, problem uh, with the constant interaction between the individual and the environment. Uh, a lot of factors come into play when it comes to obesity, it's not just that somebody's choice, it is not that somebody wants to be obese, it is not that somebody is preferring to be overweight. The environmental forces that we are all in, the constant interaction of the environment that we are set up, be it your uh, occupation, be it your uh, um, transportation, be it your culture, belief, be it your society. Uh, your environment is constantly interacting, your belief systems on top of it, your attitudes, your uh, need to conserve the energy uh, because as human beings and as a human species and most of the species that are the living species on the earth, not just human beings, we have become very efficient uh, to conserve energy. We are experts in conservation of energy. So the excess energy or the energy that we try to conserve in the process of uh, becoming more efficient. So as we try to become more efficient like we do in anything that we do outside, we also try to become very efficient uh, within our uh, human system. And all the physiological parameters in our body including your muscles and rest of the cells, your bones, your brain, 
the whole system tries to be efficient by conserving the energy. So when we try to become more efficient and conserve the energy, uh, it's like the, uh, the flip side of it is when there is excess energy overflow due to various factors, whether it is the biology or the behavior, or is it the physiology or the physics, because we talk about calories and thermodynamics and energy system, it gets very complex and it also becomes like which is first, whether this is the chicken or the egg kind of a story. So we have to, we don't know whether this is the behavior that starts first and leads to the biology or is it the biology that in turn takes over and overpowers the behavior. Whatever is the case, mostly if you talk in terms of uh, a person, this is not something that's happening overnight. This is something because of the environmental influence. Uh, you essentially have a, a very profound uh, signals that you get from within your system, from your gastrointestinal system, where you have all these uh, hormones that are interacting with the energy that you have sensed and consumed inside you. And this in turn is trying to partition that energy in various parts of your body. But what is the driving force for partitioning all this energy and to utilize this energy is the brain. So the brain is always constantly looking for signals from outside, the right kind of signals. But if the brain is fooled with the environment that we create in such a way that it is, gets maladapted, that's when the story begins and uh, the problem with the overweight uh, starts. So in a way, as we get more uh, efficient, which I, which if I would want to say that, uh, we try to get more efficient by conserving the energy, by extracting energy from the environment. Um, it looks like when it comes to uh, at least for our own health, I think it's better in my opinion and from what experts say that we become very efficiently inefficient to lose weight or to maintain our health towards that direction as opposed to trying to conserve energy and become more efficient. So becoming more efficiently inefficient as opposed to inefficiently efficient is the way to go when it comes to this. But this is a very, in a way, in a very simplistic way, I have said this, this is much more complex than uh, how it happens when you deal with an individual person who's struggling to uh, lose weight. Having said this, uh, there are, mechanistically speaking, um, there are various aspects to why when somebody gains more weight and becomes obese, um, what happens? Uh, and this happens, this actually affects us at three different levels. Uh, first of all, there is a physiological level which you can call it as a metabolic level where you can see all the problems that we come across that are listed in, in terms of various names that we come across like diabetes, hypertension, high cholesterol, cancers, uh, nowadays there's a lot of increasing evidence of cancers in association with obesity and uh, cardio and um, dementia, reproductive disorders and various other disorders. That is one aspect of bio, uh, the uh, metabolic part. Uh, of course, when you gain weight because of the extraordinary physical forces and the weight gain that you gain, you know, it becomes hard for you to function, it becomes hard for you to walk. It affects your joints, you can get sleep apnea where you cannot breathe properly when you sleep. You could get other pressure effect symptoms like reflux, you can get heartburn. Uh, there are many com mechanical compressive issues that also can happen um, with this. So the first M is the metabolic, the second M is the, the mechanical, the third M is the, the mental aspect. So the mental aspect is very challenging, very critical we see in our practices. Most of the people that are gaining weight and are excessively uh, uh, overweight or obese have a big problem with mood disorders, depression, anxiety, low self-esteem. They are being constantly bullied in the society. This even starts with very young children at the elementary school level that you know uh, they get bullied, uh, they get uh, made fun of. Um, there's a lot of stigma associated with this. There's a lot of social stigma, prejudice. All these factors uh, can negatively affect and impact the academics of a child while he's growing. 
this is very implicit and this is also very explicit. Um, uh, we have the uh, social uh, prejudice and uh, implicit and explicit uh, bias that we all express for people who are uh, obese. And this is uh, not just happening uh, uh, in the elementary school level. This is actually happening in all our uh, 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 fields of interaction. Uh, this is happening in educational institutions. This is happening in the employment. This is also happening in, uh, in families. Uh, this is happening among friends, among peers. So uh, this is a big social aspect that we have to uh, be aware of and try to help and make the mental health, not just the physical health of the person better and um, uh, try as much as possible to help um, than making uh, uh, fun of the whole medical condition. It is very unfortunate that even in healthcare circles, uh, this is still continuing that it is not really recognized as a medical condition. Um, it is somehow thought that this is because of lack of willpower or um, uh, somebody is like a glutton or somebody is like a sloth. Uh, it is not so simple. Uh, there are uh, profound biological forces, the hormonal forces and the neurobehavioral forces in the brain with constant interaction with the environment that control this. This is not just about willpower. And this is also not just about how can somebody uh, not just push away from the table or if they would only exercise more or walk more or be more active and be non-sedentary. These are all the challenges that we face. Uh, while if you think about it, we have most of the information coming and data coming from um, something like diabetes. Uh, they say that about 4% of the population, um, the diabetes is actually growing about at a rate of 4%. So obesity is growing at a rate of 1% and people think that obesity is the cause for diabetes. If diabetes is growing at a rate of 4% and obesity is growing at a rate of 1%, how can obesity be the cause for diabetes? Something with a lesser number. So this doesn't make any sense. I'll give you an example. Let's say we take, uh, for example, the United States population. We have about 240 million uh, adult people. Out of the 240 million adult people, 72 million, which is about 30%, are obese. And uh, rest of the 168 million, which is about 70%, are normal weight or slightly overweight. So if you take the 30% of the obese, 80% of these obese people are sick, which means they would get your diabetes, high cholesterol, all cancers and all the medical problems that I previously mentioned, dementia and all the mechanical issues and everything. Okay, on the flip side, that means about 20% of the obese population are actually healthy. And these are called the metabolically, um, these are called the uh, metabolically uh, healthy people, but they are obese. So on the flip side, the rest of the 70% of the population which are normal or slightly overweight, um, it's, it's almost about 40% of that population get the same diabetes, get the same hypertension, get the same cardiovascular disease, same cancers. So that mounts to a more number about almost 68 million as opposed to 58 million in the obese as the total number of people who are afflicted by the same diseases. So there are a lot of thin people who are actually getting the same metabolic problems as obese people, which means this is not just about obesity. This is about something else. This is called metabolic dysfunction. It is the metabolic dysfunction that leads to diabetes or obesity or hypertension or high cholesterol or all the things that we name. If you treat the metabolic dysfunction, then you can treat the obesity. If you treat the metabolic dysfunction, you can treat hypertension. If you treat metabolic dysfunction, you can treat diabetes. So all the thin people that we are thinking who are thin outside and fat inside 
are actually more in number compared uh, while the prevalence is a little bit more compared to the obese people that we are seeing outside which looks like seemingly that is a bigger number uh, so they get the same thing so this is more about metabolic health so having given all these scenarios from a community level and from an individual uh, perspective what should we do the primary goal for all of us for all those people who are normal weight please try to prevent weight gain this is number one if you go to your physicians please talk to your physicians make them as your partners talk to them about what are your goals uh, and um, work with them in collaboration with them they are your partners they can help you how to stay focused and how to be consistent uh, on your journey towards your health for all those people who have lost weight for the medical benefits you have to basically try not to regain the weight and keep maintaining it and uh, weight regain is a bigger problem and so weight maintenance is the primary goal and for all the people who have not lost weight and who are trying or in the path of trying to get to that healthy weight whatever it may be 5% or 10% most of the textbooks say that it's about 5 to 10% that you could start seeing metabolic benefits but the biggest challenge remains when you lose the weight and you gain it back because of the environmental forces lack of social support and um, the emotional factors uh, that take a priority uh, or the social factors or the cultural factors that take a priority over your uh, uh, your health your activity goals your nutrition goals your sleeping goals your um, managing of the stress goals that can lead to obesity so these are the factors that we need to be very uh, cognizant of and uh, please work with your healthcare providers and make them as your partners work in collaboration with them um, so finally my thing is uh, when you work towards a healthy weight goal you are trying to improve uh your quality of life uh prevent more adverse health consequences from all the problems that we talk about like diabetes or hypertension uh and more importantly for your self esteem will improve and you can change your body composition the goal is to keep maintaining that weight and keep uh, striving towards that consistency and maintaining your health goals thank you until then stay healthy